which reminds me of the professor who was teaching an empty classroom. And when he left, his colleague said, what were you doing? You were teaching an empty room. He said, yes, but you realize how far I got? <laughs> OK, so I'm going to talk about a generalization of the type of types of algebras. And I think any mathematician should justify why do you generalize? Just if you don't generalize, you generalize the same. And the reason, one of the reasons is we have finite type, you have tame type. Wild is a very big class that really hasn't been attacked fully yet. And I think that these algebras that I'm going to be speaking about are a very good place for examples in this study. So let me begin with some definitions so we know what we're talking about, or I know what I'm talking about. So always, K will be algebraically closed. For these definitions, that's not necessary. But for some of the results, it is necessary. And lambda will always denote a finite dimensional quotient of a path algebra. Is that large enough for the back? Is that large enough for the back? Okay. We say lambda is by serial if each left and right indecomposable projective lambda module P satisfies P is the sum of at most two uniserials, u and u prime uniserial. Whose intersection is either zero or simple. These algebras were introduced by, I want to get this right, excuse me, the rat, rat, can I say, sorry, I definitely want the rat. These are introduced by Skowronski and Washbush. So an obvious generalization, and I think the correct generalization, we say lambda is multi-serial if each left and right indecomposable projective <coughs> P satisfies that the red P is a sum, not direct necessarily, is a sum of unit serials, UI unit serial. And if I doesn't equal J, UI intersect UJ is zero or simple. And these were introduced by Van Hunner and 
wash push. That was 83, this was 84. And it seems like a reasonable generalization. Okay, that's one. Another type of algebra, we say lambda is special by serial. If two properties hold, first of all, for each arrow, in the quiver, there is at most one arrow B such that AB is not an I, and at most one arrow such that CA is not an I. That's the first property. And the second property is that for each vertex, there are at most two arrows entering and at most two arrows leaving. At most two <coughs> arrows Ending at C, at V, each vertex V, and at most <coughs> two arrows starting at C, at D. Okay. And these are introduced by Bob and Washbush. multi-serial <coughs> if one holds and get rid of the restriction about arrows <coughs> and this as far as we know this was not defined as uh, oh I'm a bad boy this is joined with Bill Schroeder. And as far as we know, this is a new definition. And as the talk progresses, hopefully you'll see this is a good definition, an interesting class of algebras. Now, by serial and specialized serial have been worked on by many, many authors. There are over 340 references in uh, Mass Sinet. Uh, some of the people, that I'm, other than the ones I've already mentioned on the blackboard, Koi Boli, Ringel, Progazali, Erdman, um, Bastian, Schroer, goes on. It's like a who's who. The Asa and the Wrighton quiver has been studied. The derived equivalence, derived equivalence has been studied. The Asa, um, one of the types of things. 
classification of radical squared zero tame algebras, etc. So this class by serial, I don't know, I'm not going to be able to work that into my talk. <laughs> So this, this biserial and special biserial have been used and are being used by many people. So I could probably use this. So, what type of things are known? Well, hopefully, and it's true that special by serial implies by serial. And that already is back in the vault. Washbush paper. And we have shown that special multi serial implies multi serial. That's good. The definitions are very different in a sense. One has the structure of the projectives in terms of unit serial modules, and one is a sort of arrow relation condition. Corey Bovey showed that by serial implies tame. These algebras are usually wild. Not only are they tame, but indecomposable modules are string or band modules. And pictorially, what that means is a string module has simples that look something like this, or opposite order. And a band module looks sort of the same, except that there's some identification of the two simples at the end. So you really have a very strong hold on the modules, on the maps, in the case of a biserial algebra. What could possibly be said here if you had a wild algebra? A wild algebra should contain everything. So we should not have a result that there is later in the talk. I'll leave you hanging, dangling slowly in the breeze. Let me talk about some results that are true in this, well, sorry, bring, bring together two more algebras that are not mentioned yet. One of my favorites is this next one. So we're now going to talk about symmetric algebras for a little while. So in general, I haven't assumed that, but now I want to, we'll be looking at symmetric algebras. And let me remind you that a symmetric algebra is an algebra that's isomorphic on the left and on its right to its dual. This is a hum k lambda k. And I want to talk about cycles. So we'll say a cycle is simple. A cycle in Q is simple. if it has 
No repeated arrows. RP. I can spell it. No repeated arrows. It could have repeated vertices, but I'll use the word simple cycle to mean that. And what I want to do is take a set of simple cycles. So S will be a set of simple cycles. And mu will just be a function from S to the positive integers. And we want to make a definition. We say this pair is a defining pair is that for each cycle in there, any cyclic permutation of the cycle is in there. So first of all, S is closed on the cyclic permutation. That is, if A1 to AN is a simple cycle in S, then A2 to AN, A1 is also in S. Secondly, mu is constant on these permut on permutation classes. It's constant on permutation classes. If two simple cycles are permutation of one, cyclic permutation, then the, the mu of them are equal. And the interesting property is that every arrow is in a unique cyclic permutation class. So what this means is every arrow in your quiver is in one of the simple cycles and the only ones that's in are our cyclic permutations of that one. Okay. When you have such a situation, we call the cycles, we call the cycles in their special cycles. creative words in mathematics, special. Everybody uses special. Maybe I should use especially special. <laughs> anyway. So, define an ideal when you have one of these classes. Find an ideal for a defining pair. Yes? Okay, can you repeat why you say something proper? Yes, just say it with yes. Property two is that you take the value of mu on, on some cycle, it's the same on any cyclic permutation. It's constant on, on these permutation classes, cyclic permutation classes. So I wanted to find an ideal. I is generated by, first of all, all paths of length 2 that are not in a cycle, A paths of length 2 such that AB does not lie on a special cycle.
So the special cycles are the only things where paths of length two, if you have a path of length two that does not align a special cycle, it's going to be my ideal. Secondly, if we have two special cycles and they're cycles at a vertex, the same vertex, then you take the difference. Well, you want to put this mu in here. That many times the cycle, you make this a relation. And thirdly, anything bigger than these, so if C is a cycle and is a special cycle, then you go around this multiplicity times, and you go one more step, that's going to be in the ideal, where C is the cycle A1 to A N. So it's very direct if you had these defining cycles to write down relations and we get an algebra so, so lambda equal kq by this ideal for a defining pair called an algebra generated by cycles. So that's a different class of algebra, or seemingly different class of algebra. You have the ones, the biserials, you have the special multiserials, you have the special multiserials, and now we have algebras generated by cycles. Finally, in my title, I had Brown configuration algebras. It's combinatorial data. It's a, it's a tuple of things from which you can create an algebra. It's a little complicated, so I'm going to just talk about it in terms of these types of algebras. So, what's a Brouwer configuration? The idea is to generalize Brouwer tree, which is generalized by Brouwer graph. And this is a generalization of that. Brouwer configuration. It's a four tuple, gamma zero, gamma one, u and sigma, and O I mean. Where gamma zero is a set of nodes, alpha one, alpha m, some set. Gamma 1 is a batch of multi-sets of nodes. So each VI, multi-set just means it can be repeated terms. Multi-set of elements of gamma 0. Mu is some function from gamma 0 to the non to the positive integers. And sigma is some, something called an orientation, and I'll try to explain what that means in a second. Well, the point is, the point is that one can use algebras generated by cycles to explain what these things are. So what I want to do is create a defining pair from this data, and then I'll have an algebra. So the set gamma zero you think of as it's going to be the cycles. One alpha for each cycle. So the nodes of cycles, and then For each alpha in here, I want to create a cycle. 
Well, I look at the V I one to V I S such that alpha is in V I J. In other words, I look at the V's that have alpha. And an orientation is, an, is a cyclic order. So O gives you some order VIS, and it's a cyclic order, so you put VI1 back at the other end. And of course, if you think of these as vertices, you could write these down as a cycle, VI1, VI2, cycling back to VI1. And the quiver that you take have the, VI, the VIs as vertices, and any one of these is a new, is a distinct arrow. These give you the arrows. If you think about what you get here, you clearly get a defining class. Each arrow is uniquely put in one of these cycles. Every arrow is in a cycle. And the multiplicity is on alpha. So alpha is just a cycle and any cyclic permutation thereof. And so I get a defining class. The algebra that you get, we call the Brouwer configuration algebra. If you were in the case where gamma zero and gamma one is actually a graph, then this is the Brouwer graph algebra that's been studied by people. Okay, so I spent a an inordinate amount of time making definitions, but I think it was necessary to make sense of what I'm going to say now. So the theorem, the first theorem that we can show is some lambda is symmetric, and the following statements are equivalent. One. Lambda is a special biserial, special multiserial, special multi, a symmetric, <coughs> special multiserial algebra. You already assumed that it's symmetric. Yeah, I'm emphasizing that. Yes. <laughs> Lambda is an algebra defined by cycles. BCA for a Brouwer configuration algebra. Okay. That's all well and good, but it doesn't show any properties of these algebras, show why. I say they're a reasonable uh, generalization of what's already known. So the first thing I want to do is prove a result for these types of algebras, these multiserial, special multiserial algebras, these Brouwer configuration algebras, that generalizes an interesting result for special by serial. So Again, so I don't lose everybody, I'll just give a quick definition. Lambda is gentle if lambda is special by serial. And I is a quadratic binomial ideal. So quadratic binomial means generated by paths of length two. Well, 
the philosophy of this talk, lambda is a generalization we call almost gentle. If lambda is special multiserial, multiserial, and I is a quadratic binomial ideal. I notice today there's a talk on general algebras that has been mentioned in other talks. And this class has been studied. One of the results that's been proved is that if you take the trivial extension by its dual, you get a special by serial, symmetric special by serial algebra. So let me just say, if M is a bimodule, just so you know the terminology, you can take what's called a trivial extension by M, and the multiplication there is given by AM BN is AB AN plus MB. So theorem. A is almost gentle, and then A trivially extended by its dual, we know is symmetric, but in fact is a variable configuration algebra. which is generalizing one of the results for gentle algebras. There's a partial converse which is interesting. Suppose I have those lambda is Brown configuration algebra with defining pair <coughs> S mu. <coughs> An edge cut E is a set of arrows such that A is an arrow such that there exists a unique cycle C up to permutation, up to cyclic permutation. with A and C. In other words, for each permutation class, for each, for each permutation class, choose one arrow. So an edge cut just for each of these special cycles, you're choosing one arrow out of it. Then you get a converse to what we have, that is proposition. If lambda is a Brouwer configuration algebra and E is the cuts, the edge cut set, edge cut set, then when you throw away these edges, you take KQ throw away these edges, and you take the ideal living in this place, the 
This is general. Oh, almost general. of A by its dual, you get back to lambda. So what this is saying, uh, which is, I think, a bit interesting, is that if you take different edge cuts for the same Brouwer configuration algebra, you'll get different almost general algebras. And which ones you get, what their relationship is, would be, I think, interesting to study. state another result generalizing what happens in the biserial case. Yeah. Now some of these I should say the proofs are not generalizations of the proofs in general because a number of the proofs use the fact that you have string modules. So we can't can't use that. Theorem let Lambda be a special multiserial algebra. Then, in fact, it's a quotient of a Brouwer configuration algebra. Then, lambda, then there exists Brouwer configuration algebra lambda star. And a ring subjection. Find the star. So some of these results should justify these definitions that I've made. But I want to get back to the question about modules. Watch me just think of a smiley face on my back. serial lambda module M. Well, what should be the definition? If the radical of M is a sum Serial modules. With a 
when I doesn't equal J, UI intersect UJ is either zero or a simple module. surprising theorem. Again, I remind you, all this work is joined with Sibylla Schroll. If lambda is a multi-serial algebra, then every Finitely generated lambda module is multi serial. There's a sense in which this theorem shouldn't exist. The same about all final generated modules over a wild algebra in general. It doesn't mean that you can understand them completely, but it does indicate that there's some hope of trying to understand more about the representation theory of this wild algebra. What's the picture you should have? If you look at the rad of M, it somehow looks something like this. The trouble, you can't say much more, how do things attach at the top becomes quite complicated. On the other hand, maybe for some special examples of wild, one could get some more information about what the representation theory looks like, get more idea of what the AR quiver looks like. There are all types of possibilities of what can be done with these algorithms. I'm going to give it one more application, but I want to leave the general, the general framework in just a second. So I think that the results we have justify saying this class of wild algebras is worth further investigation. Okay. So let me go to radical cubed equals zero. A number of people, in particular people like Skowronski and other and Yerdman, and have been trying to classify tame symmetric algebras of radical cube zero. And coming up in this classification are the special biserial and the Brouwer graph algebras. Well, in general, when you take away the tame you have the following result. The lambda, the, the symmetric algebra with the symmetric, let's make it indecomposable just to make life easy. With Radical cube, zero, but radical squared, not zero. Then lambda is Brouwer configuration algebra. In particular, it's multi-serial, it's special multi-serial, it's generated by cycles. And this, I should mention some open questions. One open question in general, I think this is open, is even for biserial. Does in general, does biserial imply special biserial?
Well, here's a case where the answer is yes. Or more generally, does multi-serial imply special multi-serial? While I'm at open questions, I should give you another one. I talked about the, dual, the, the trivial extension of a, a lambda by dual of lambda, and that if you start with a je, an almost gentle algebra, you get a Brouwer configuration algebra. Suppose A is just a five-dimensional algebra. If A is trivially extended by the dual of A, is a Brown configuration algebra, then does that imply that A is almost gentle? Is that the only case where you my opinion is I think this is true, but I've been unable to prove it. There's one more thing I can say if time permits. job easy, I'll end on time. I want to say one more thing about radical cube zero symmetric algebras. So this is, well known, so I would say, well known to those that know it well, except that it's not right. <laughs> So I've seen this in the literature and in papers. I just wanted to mention this. If you take a symmetric M and N by N symmetric matrix, with entries in the non-negative integers, And of course, you can associate to M a graph with with N vertices. You all can do that. Where between I and J is M I is the number M I J number of edges. And when we have a graph, you see this construction. Given G, you can construct a symmetric radical cube zero algebra. So for each edge, you put an arrow A and an arrow A star. And the relations are A Q, where these are the arrows of N vertices, A Q mod I, where I is generated by A A star minus A star A. And any A B or A star B, A B star, I get them all? Yeah. So if you the only relations, the only non-zero paths that you're going to get are these AA star paths, or A star A. The only non-zero paths. And there's some statements that say these are, these are the symmetric elements. It's not true up to isomorphism, certainly. So I just want you to be careful of this. If you look at this example, You look at that matrix and you look at this matrix. The picture you get in both cases is a rectangle. Now the vertices are different, but the 
quiver you get is exactly, the graph you get is exactly the same. Therefore, the algebras are isomorphic. So you're not getting a one-to-one -one correspondence. Worse than that is, if you just look at the matrix one, that gives you the algebra AXY modulo, let's see, XY minus YX, commutative polynomial ring, X squared, Y squared. And you don't get it in any nice way that I could see. The other one, the one that looks like kill off xy and take x squared minus y squared, these are isomorphic if the square root of minus 1 is in your field. They're not isomorphic otherwise. And so it seems like in the non-algebraic and closed case, this matrix thing doesn't give you all the algebras. So I think with that weird ending, I'll stop. <laughs> Questions or comments? Here, uh, we know that the integral algebras are constant. Do you know how many DIPs almost the integral algebras are constant? The almost integral, I, I don't know. I, I just I don't know the answer. I think not. But don't hold me to it. Okay. I have a question. The matrix M is not symmetric. Uh, as I said, this was a weird ending. <laughs> Just see if you were awake. Okay, any more comments, weird or otherwise? No, not the case, and let's say it again.